All right, hello everybody. Welcome back to Star Wars KOTOR. My name is Bernie Earth Chris, and I'm going to be your pilot tonight. So in the last episode, we did uh, about 90% of Dantooine at that point. Um, we are going to be coming back to the planet because there are a couple things that we uh, do have to do here uh, later on. But uh, before we get into any of that, though, we're going to go uh, on a little adventure here. So let's go to the galaxy map. So... We can go to one, two, three, four, five, six planets total. So uh, there's Dantooine, Korriban, Manon, Tatooine, Kashyyyk, and Yavin, which was not in the original game. So, uh, well, it was if you were a PC player. If you were the, uh, if you had this on the Xbox, is that and this planet actually came as downloadable content, as far as I can remember. So, well, let's go here. Let's uh, let's uh, see what's what over on Yavin. Lord Malak, the Star Forge is operating at 200% capacity, far beyond our expectations. I am more interested in the young Jedi Bastila and her battle meditation. Have you learned how she escaped the destruction of Taris? She was aided by Karth Onasi, a decorated war hero of the Republic and a legendary soldier. During the Mandalore Wars, he was honored many times for his bravery. You know this man? Yes, Lord Malak. He served under me when I still followed the Republic. You could say I was his mentor. Interesting. How did you acquire this information, Admiral? An eyewitness, Lord Malak. Kalo Nord, a bounty hunter, was there when Bastila and Karth escaped the planet. Apparently, they left him for dead. A Jedi and a war hero. It's a wonder you survived the encounter. I am hard to kill, Lord Malak. Kahlo has agreed to help us capture the young Bastila for a very hefty fee, of course. But I assure you, he is well worth the price. His reputation as a bounty hunter is well earned. Her companions are nothing to me, Kahlo. But I desire the young Jedi taken alive, if at all possible. Lord Malak, forgive me, there is something else. May we have a private audience away from the ears of the common soldiers? I trust you are not wasting my time, Admiral Karath. I promise you will be very interested in what Kahlo has to tell you about Bastila's other companions, Lord Malak. Alright, welcome to Yavin. We got, uh, looks like we got into a little orbiting space station up, uh, up above the planet's surface. And, oop, what do we got here? I was checking our supplies in the cargo hold. Something's not right. Not right? What do you mean? Someone's been into the emergency sass or food. Mission and I asked everyone, but nobody knows anything about it. You might want to check out the food stores the next time you're in the cargo hold. Interesting, okay. Hmm. Well, we'll do that at a later time. Let's explore this uh, base here. So, I think I'll take, um... Uh, I think I'll take, uh, Juhani and T3 with me. Yeah, Juhani can level up. So, let's go ahead and do that. Juhani's a very good, um... Uh... How do I put this? She's a good fighter character. She's a uh, she doesn't get too many of the, she doesn't get too much force power. She's a, she, she's a Jedi guardian, so she doesn't get too much force power. Her combat skills are very very useful. So uh, I'll level her up accordingly. Let's see, maybe I'll give you uh, maybe a critical strike for now. 
and cure. Let's see what else? 14 charisma. Uh, that should do it. Uh, what else? Hmm. Stun droid. Okay, I'll take that. That should do it for now. I'll also set you on Jedi support as well. Alright, let's move forward. What is it? Who are you? What do you want? I recognize your ships. Davik, isn't it? But who are you? You new or something? Yeah, I'm new. Very new. You don't sound like a trend notion and you're not one of Davik's. Who are you? What do you want? What is it? Who are you? What do you want? My god, you've got that. <laughs> that's, uh, that's an Incredibles reference there for you folks. Um, <clears throat> I'm trying to save the galaxy from the Sith. Huh? Sith? They haven't been here in 50 years, not since the last war. Don't see why they start making a habit of it now. Still, all my business with the Sith is old news. Politics ain't my affair so long as you don't get all worked up. I guess I might get in. Be nice to have someone to talk to for a change. Trandoshans and smugglers aren't exactly stunning conversationalists. Trandoshans and smugglers, what are you talking about? They come by here every once in a while, it's how I keep in the loop, you know? But Trinocean lizard speak is kind of hard to follow, and they have pretty limited imaginations. Smugglers aren't much better either. Well, this is getting kind of awkward with the door, so if you just hold on a minute, I'll open the damn thing up and we can talk more face to face. Just have to fiddle with the lock. Thing keeps jamming. There we go. Suvam Tan. Interesting. How's it going? Hmm, you don't look like I thought you would. Too... human. Don't seem any of your kind out here at all anymore. Not since the war, at any rate. What brings you here? I seek the pieces of a map to a star forge. Any ideas about that? Hmm, star forge? Never heard of it. Nothing in this system except for ruins of Exar Kun's war. Exar Kun? Don't tell me you youngsters don't know anything about Exar Kun in that war. Then again, uh, there's been a lot of uh, troubles recently, I've heard. Enlighten me about Exar Kun, because I don't... I think he, um... He comes before the time of the events of the game, so, uh, it, so uh, for those of you who are new to watching this, I'll go into this a little bit. So enlighten me about Exar Kun. Exar Kun was a Jedi, to start at least. He came here to Yavin and landed on the fourth moon, the one that you can see through the window. There were some ancient Sith temples here, and in them Exar Kun gained terrible powers. He raised the Sith and waged a war against the Republic, much like what seems to be happening today. But Exar Kun was far more powerful than any Sith Lord has come since. The very ground trembled beneath his feet, and when he looked at you, you just... Just... Ugh. But that's all in the past now. I've got my life of staying here and tinkering with the stuff I've found in the ruins and the things the Trandoshans and Smugglers bring me. Who are the Trandoshans? The Trandoshans? Mercenaries and bounty hunters. Scum, mostly. They look like big two-legged lizards. <laughs> Sorry, luck Rodians. Nah, I don't want to insult this guy. Why are they here? They found me here a couple years after the war ended. Usually they don't bargain with people they find alone in abandoned space stations, but we worked out a deal. I'd give them a few of my more applicable inventions at reasonable prices, and they keep me supplies with uh, food and new materials. It's worked out well so far, for years, really. With Davik gone, they've been getting ideas, though. Anything else you want to know? Uh... 
How did you know Davik? He used to come by every once in a while to trade. He worked for the exchange, big time smugglers. The Trinosians didn't really want to get on his bad side, so they let it go. But now that he's gone, things are a bit more... uncertain. Tell me about the system. Well, this gas giant here is Yavin, and it's got a whole bunch of moons around it. The only really interesting one is Yavin 4, though, and it's been pretty much been picked clean. What was on Yavin 4? When Axar Kun started the Great Sith War 50 years ago, he used Yavin 4 as a base, burning a lot of the Sith temples there. When he lost, the Republic came and bombed the surface of the planet, destroying pretty much everything. Pretty much everything? Oh, you could still find a few things here and there on the surface, some buried from the bombardment, some that look much, much older. I've been there a bunch of times and found pretty much all that there was to find. I took them back here and tinkered them with a bit, and getting them up and working, or improving them. I have a bunch you can look at if you're interested. Maybe purchase? Sure, what do you have? Yeah, I have a few things kicking around the place. Stuff the Transoceans and Smugglers have brought for me to look at, and a few things I've been making from parts. They aren't cheap, though. They pay a lot for what I can make. And anything I sell to you, I can't exactly sell to them, now can I? But if you're willing to pay, I've got a few more advanced things you can look at. I'm always working on more, so you can check back some other time if I don't have what you want right now. Here, have a look. And Suvam Tan does have a lot of really good stuff, like this light exoskeleton. 10,000 credits. All of this, all of this stuff is uh, pretty comparable to that. <laughs> so, dex bonus 6, max dex bonus plus 5, uh, dexterity plus 1, strength plus 1. It's upgradable. That's pretty good. Baragwin Shadow Armor. We'll ask him about the Baragwin later on. Uh, suffice to say, the Baragwin are supposed to be some of the best... Uh, Weapon and armor smiths in the universe. Um, defense bonus plus seven, max dex bonus plus four, stealth plus four, upgradable as well. Advanced stabilizer gloves, dex plus three, blaster bolt def deflection plus five. Advanced sensory implant, awareness plus ten, holy crap, dexterity plus two. Advanced biostabilizer implant, mind affecting and poison. Braglin droid shield, this could be very useful for, for a T3 M4 here, so. Because it, it has unlimited uses. That's uh, that's really good. <laughs> Again, a lot of good stuff here, but it's all expensive. So, all right, let's uh, take a look around. There's a little Gizka here. We'll be seeing more of those aliens later on. If we press caps lock, I believe. Yeah, we get a nice little view out the window here. This giant Yavin out there. Oops. There we go. And yes, this is where the uh, battle between the uh, Rebel Alliance and the Galactic Empire will take place 4,000 years from now, so uh, that's pretty cool. <laughs> it was pretty cool of Bioware to include this planet in, in the uh, in the game. That's a little nod to the original series. But alright, let's uh, move forward. I think I know where we're going to go to our first planet to find the pieces of the Star Forge. So, let's move forward. Yeah, we'll go to Tatooine. Let's go. has given us a, a vision like the one we shared on Dantooine did you see it of course you must have the force is strong with us both Tatooine is known for little but blowing sand I find it surprising that there would be a star map somewhere in its desolate wastes 
It looked like it was inside some kind of a cave. The star map would likely have to be within some kind of shelter to protect it against dust and sandstorms. I suspect there are many such caves and caverns hidden in the sands of the Dune Sea. The creatures of this world probably use them as their lairs. No doubt things will become more clear once we discover the star map's location. Indeed. Uh, I don't think I'm, uh, I'm gonna see if Bastel has anything more to say, because she might. I mean, real quick, just give a quick dialogue with her. How can I help? You wanted to speak to me? Yes, I did. I wanted to speak to you about our mission and what lies ahead for us. It seems fate, or the Force, is driving us into a confrontation with the Dark Lord. You must prepare yourself for when we face Malak. The confrontation will be difficult for you. I remember how hard it was when I first faced Revan. Is it true that you killed Darth Revan? It's true that due to my battle meditation, I was with the Jedi Strike team that boarded Revan's ship. We did not kill Revan, however. So who killed Revan, then? Our mission was to capture Revan if possible. It was Malak who turned on his own master, firing upon Revan's ship while we were still on board it. It was his desire to kill us and his master both. Thankfully, we narrowly escaped the vessel as it exploded. But you would have killed Revan eventually, right? As I said, we were there to capture Revan alive. The Jedi do not believe in killing their prisoners. No one deserves execution, no matter what their crimes. Remember that Revan and Malak were once great Jedi, heroes in every sense of the word. They demonstrate the danger of the dark side to us all. I'm sorry, we really shouldn't speak of this anymore. The memory of my confrontation with Revan is painful. Let's return to the mission, please. Fair enough. Do you have anything else to say? How can I help? Eh, alright. I'd like to know more about you, Bastila. Yes, I suppose I can understand your curiosity, given the bond that connects us. Very well. I'll tell you a bit about myself. Tell me how you joined the Jedi, then. I was found to be strong with the Force at a young age, as most Padawans are. As a girl, I was given to the Order to be trained. When I joined the Order, I left my family on Tal Ravan, as all Padawans do. My family is still there, the last that I heard. I've had little contact with them, as it is discouraged. Discouraged? Why? Relationships with family members are fraught with powerful emotions. Such extremes are to be avoided. Anger and hate are the worst, but even love can lead to folly. You aren't allowed to love? Emotional entanglements can be dangerous. They can impair rational thought. They can lead to outbursts of uncontrolled emotion. A Jedi must be above such things. You don't sound very convinced. It can be a hard lesson to learn. I was not on good terms with all of my family, but I do remember missing my father terribly for a long time. You and your father were close? Very close. I was only a little girl when I left my family, but I still remember him fondly. He was kind and gentle and doted on me. My mother, however, was different. I was not on good terms with my mother. I was only a little girl when I left, but I was old enough to resent her and the way she treated my father. She pushed my father into treasure hunting. I spent all my young life on ships, traveling from one false lead to the next. She whittled away my father's entire fortune, and I hated her for it. I think she was relieved to give me to the Jedi, but my father was heartbroken. Mm, I'm sorry. You never tried to get in touch with your father again? A child is too young to understand the sacrifices that must be made. It's better if they have no contact with their family once they're removed. Once I was older, I realized the wisdom of this policy. A Jedi must do what is needed, personal desires notwithstanding. Love can only obscure and confuse the matter. You sound very sad when you say that. Even a Jedi cannot always control the feelings of the heart. We must do our best to guard against it, no matter what the cost. But some sacrifices are harder than others. I, I do not wish to discuss this anymore. I would rather return to our mission. Fair enough. Alright, let's move forward then. Uh, I'll bring... Um, hmm. I think I'll bring Bastila and Mission along. Welcome to Anchorhead, potential customer. Zerka Corporation stands ready to serve, after some formalities, of course. First, your ship is not on our list of planned arrivals for today. 
There is a docking fee of 100 credits because of this. What do I get for my 100 credits? The immediate benefit is access to these very docking facilities. This is the only port in Anchorhead. Once you've paid, we will offer trade services as well. We're not unreasonable, we just want to cover expenses. Hmm. Let me see if I can convince this little schmuck here. Is there any way you could reconsider the fee? I assure you that the fee is non-negotiable. We have a very thin margin of profit on this world. Come on, think about it. The money I save I'll spend in your stores. That does make sense. I suppose I could let it go this time. We need the business. Yes. This will cover any future landings as well. It's like a registration. So we can serve you better when you return. Now, as a customs officer, I can provide information on services. Is this visit business or pleasure? Hmm. I'm looking for very specific things. Who should I ask? That's not much information. Could you tell me more? Hmm. I'm looking for a star map. Very old, very complex. A star map? That's old Holotech, isn't it? Not much reason to outfit this dry rock with tech like that. You could ask around, but for something like that, you'll probably have to go digging. I wouldn't know where to begin. You could always ask a Jawa. It's hard to tell what they know. Hmm. All right, well, I gotta get going. As you wish. If you need anything else, I'll be here. Oh, I can level up mission. I'll we'll do that very quickly. Uh, we'll bring up your wisdom a little bit. And then that's fine. Uh, what else? Okay. That should do it. What do you want to play? Okay. Good. What? Okay. Thought there was something over there. Hello there, Captain. Let's see. Ah, yes, here it is. It looks like the shipment has been delivered to your ship as requested. Uh, what shipment? What are you talking about? This is Docking Bay 32, isn't it? Yes, it is, and that's what I have here on the requisition form. Everything seems to be in order. The Gizka are your, are your problem now. Uh, excuse me, did you say Gizka? It says right here in the manifest that you ordered a crate of Gizka to be delivered to Docking Bay 32. That's right here. Now all I need is your thumbprint for the... Wait a second, where did the data pad go? <sighs> Nothing's ever organized around here. At any rate, the Gizka are yours. One of the lowest the loaders said the crate split open once you put it in your hold. Some of the critters might have gotten loose. That happens, I'm afraid. We don't accept liability, and we certainly couldn't take the cargo back. Enjoy. Uh, that could be a problem. The trouble with Gizka. The fates seem to be conspiring against you. The disorganized port authorities on Tatooine appear to have shipped a delivery of Gizka to the Evan Hawk's hold, and there doesn't appear to be any way to get them back. The dock worker mentioned that some of the Gizka escaped, which certainly doesn't sound good. But we'll get into that later. Right now we got, uh... We got a desert planet to explore. Uh, there's a merchant right over... Whoa, sorry. There's a merchant right over there. So, but, uh, we'll come back to that later on. This is Anchorhead. I believe this was the uh, Moss Isley before Moss Isley. Uh, I could be wrong about that, though. Who's this person? Sharina Fizark. Please, will you help me? I have nothing. Nothing left. Speak, I'm listening. I'll try not to take up too much of your time. I realize that everyone is out for themselves on Tatooine. My husband was a hunter, killed out on the dunes. This raid plate is all I have left. Please, will you buy it? 
I don't need a handout. I just can't sell it to Faza without a license. Please, I'm worried about having it. They're so rare. Uh, I wouldn't be able to sell it. I'm no hunter. No, but you looked... Uh, I'm sorry, I, I thought you looked equipped like a hunter. Are you sure you're not going to be getting a license? I mean, you don't look like a farmer, and the only way to be brought out of Anchorhead is to get a hunting license. Where would I get a license? What's the cost? Zerka Corporation sells them out of their office just south of here in the center of Anchorhead. That's where my husband got his. I think they charge 200 credits, but they've been known to make exceptions. Please, no one else will help. Okay, uh... Let's talk about what to do with this plate. Will you buy it? I can't sell it myself. They're worth more than 500 credits. Hmm. Perhaps I'll buy it from you. You will? Oh, thank you so much. Please, I know it's worth at least 500 credits. I'll tell you what, I'll pay you that and an extra 200. Good luck. 700 credits? Oh, thank you. It is more than generous of you. I don't know what to say. I just don't. Wow. Sometimes helping people feels pretty good, you know? Thank you for helping this woman. It may not seem like such a great thing to you, but you are making a difference. For whatever it means, may the Force be with you. You saved us. And also with you, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh, we got 250 experiences and light side points for that, though. That's pretty nice. Uh, let's move on. I believe... Yeah, this is the hunting lodge. We can come here at a little bit later and then get our some of our credits back from the... Uh, Raid wait. What's in here? The Zerka office. You'll be hearing about this, you Zerka puppet. I'm not gonna let this drop. You can't just murder a whole village. And don't tell me to take my concerns to your corporate kiosk. I know when I'm not wanted. What's going on here? Who are you? I'm done talking in this office. They aren't interested in listening to me. I doubt they'll even acknowledge I was here. Typical corporate evasion. That's what happens when they own everything. No accountability. Just don't even bother bringing it up. Oh, he seems troubled. Can I help you? These are the offices of the Zerka Corporation. I trust you have business with the company. If this is about employment, I'm afraid all regular mining positions are full. And before you ask, we are also no longer selling hunting licenses. Hmm. I want to ask about hunting licenses. As I said, we are no longer selling them. There are too many people cavorting about outside the walls as it is. Why would I need a license anyway? We use them to ensure that only people judged fit by Zerka Corporation are allowed outside the city. We don't allow casual exploration because of legal concerns. Zerka Corporation takes no responsibility for loss of life on the dunes. It's just so we can keep track of people. No one leaves the city without a Zerka hunting license. So there's no way to get a license at all? Well, normally we charge 200 credits, but I could make an exception if you agree to perform a task for us. It's similar to hunting. The sand people are becoming a problem. They destroy our sand crawlers and kill our miners. One particular tribe is the worst. It's as if their chieftain has decided to wage war against us. I would like their attacks terminated. Bring me their gaffy sticks as proof. If you agree to do this, I'll give you a hunting license now and pay a bounty for each stick later. I'll give a bonus for the chieftains. Uh... Alright, if it's the only way, I'll do this for you. Excellent. Now, just so we understand each other, this is an enforceable contract. Zerka Corporation takes this very seriously. Here's your license, and a few directions. We believe one of their enclaves is in the far south of the Dune Sea. You might try following one of our sand crawlers. They're regularly attacked. I wouldn't mind you escorting them. I'll get to it then. Very good. Zerka Corporation looks forward to your future business. This is another merchant here, Greet to Holda, but uh, we'll talk with him a little later on. Don't you believe a word of what Zerka Corporation says in there? There's always a peaceful solution to the conflict. They're just lazy. Is this about the Zerka wanting the sand people keep and killed? So you're the killer they hired. Just gonna walk out there and wipe them out? 
I'd expect no less from fools. The Sand People aren't animals. I've watched them, and they're intelligent. There must be a way to peacefully stop the attacks, I know it. But no one will try, of course. You can't even leave the city without Zerka approval, and they want the Sand People dead. The Zerka did say that the Sand People did attack first. Well, yes, they did. They attacked the Zerka, who deployed numerous giant sand crawlers and started tearing up the desert with ion shovels and whatever else. What would you have done? To the sand people, it must have seemed like an invasion. There were no negotiations for territory or resources. I don't think the killing has been justified, but as a, converse, a conservationist, I'm hoping someone at least tries to talk this out. Why hasn't anyone tried talking to them, then? Well, there's a small matter that they don't seem to speak a language that the Arabic translator can understand. Is that their fault? There was even a Jedi here a few years ago that couldn't seem to get through to them. I think that in, in blood, too. I'm not saying it will be easy, but someone has to try. Maybe with a real translation droid, not these old protocol scrap heaps walking around. Who would have a capable droid? They're pretty rare, even on well-stocked worlds, but I'm sure I heard something about an unusual droid in the shop here in Tatooine. I'm sure I heard Yuka Laka say that I could speak a sand people dialect, although he'd say Russell's goal to make a sale. <laughs> with that droid, maybe you could talk to them. I wouldn't survive. Maybe with desert ropes as a disguise, someone could get into their enclave. Uh, Where would you get ropes to match theirs? And I suppose you could take them off the warrior ridge in the Dune Sea, but there's no way I'd survive anything like that. Plus, you'd have to explain why you killed their warriors if you're trying to make peace. But I suppose there's no other way. Where would that enclave you mentioned be? What? It's no secret where they are. The attacks get worse the further southwest of the Dune Sea you go. Then people die on both sides. Well, maybe I'll look into it then. Sure, that's, that's what the Zerka Corporation keeps saying. And then they just start shooting again. The fighting won't stop until they're all dead. Hmm. He mentioned a droid. Let me take a look at this real quick. He said that there's a droid shop here in Tatooine. It says a hunting lodge, the Zerka office. Swoop registration. Alright, we'll go swoop racing a little bit later on. Uh... There's a cantina, there's the droid shop, and I think that's the way out to the Dune Sea. Let's take a look at this droid shop first before we do anything else. Oh, what's this? Lord Malak was most displeased when he learned you had escaped Terrace alive. He has promised a great reward to whoever destroys you. Oh, is that right? Uh, how do I want to deal with you schmucks? We'll put you in... No. Hmm. the bozo in the midair. Crap, okay. There we go. What do you got? Frag grenade, advanced med packs, the assassin pistol, each on a dueling shield, crystal dom uh, dominant crystal, and a data pad. Hmm, interesting. What do you got? Yellow crystal, rupine cardio regulator, double bladed lightsaber, nice, and a dark Jedi robe. What about you? Ion grenade, Sith energy shield, red crystal, and a short lightsaber. Okay, nice. 
He made a killing off those Sith Troopers. Get it? A killing? <laughs> I'll be here all week. Try the meat, it's good. <laughs> Alright, uh, let's go to that droid shop and see what's what. Hey, Bastila. Oh. Ever use the Force just for fun? You know, a little jolt of the Force to trip up some jerk who's ticking you off? I would never use the Force for such petty and trivial revenge. The mere thought of it's preposterous. Aw, oh, come on. There's gotta be times when you thought about it. Don't be so stuck up. You can tell me. I am not stuck up. I merely have the years of training to give me the wisdom and understanding to see how childish such an act would be. Childish? Is that a crack about my age? You ain't much older than me, Miss High and Mighty. Just because you're some Jedi doesn't mean you can be a prissy little... <laughs> what the... Hey, that wasn't funny. I have no idea what you're talking about, Mission. Come now, we have to get going. Please, do try to be less clumsy in the future. <laughs> it was funny, Mission. Come on, it was a little bit. Into the droid shop. Let's go. Okay. What's this? A customer I don't recognize. Perhaps you bring off road money to Yukonlaka. Uh, my money's my own business. Of course it is, of course, but you must appreciate the finer things. Just take a look at the droid I have available, an HK-47. It's a fine protocol translator. I think it's been modified. It claims to understand the sand people dialect and also has some armor mounts. Combat ready, perhaps? Uh... I'm looking for exotic, something called a star map. I deal mostly in swoop parts and droid maintenance. Maybe I heard a job that or something about old things, though. But I could have misheard. They cover very large areas when they scavenge, but they aren't doing much right now. Did the job was bring you this HK-47? No, they keep assemb assembled or working units to sell themselves. They don't have them often. No place to store them. Mostly they bring in parts. There's the occasional antique, old blasters and the like. Tatooine has a few buried secrets. What's stopping them from scavenging? Again, I may have misunderstood, but I think some of their tribe mates are missing. I think they wanted help. I stay away from trouble, but if you're interested, there was a job by the city gate. You'll need a joy to translate, though. Mm, not interested for right now. Of course, of course, but remember I'm here. You'll not find another droid like the one I'm selling. Let me talk with this HK-47 and see what he's like. Greeting! Hello to you, prospective purchaser. I am referred to as HK-47, a fully functional size tech corporation droid skilled in both combat and protocol functions. Query, would you be so kind as to purchase this model from Yukalaka? It would serve my purposes to be removed from his ownership. Uh, sell yourself, droid. Why would I need, why would I need you? Disclosure. I am a versatile protocol and combat droid, fluent in verbal and cultural translation. Should your needs prove more practical, I am also skilled in highly personal combat. So you translate. I understand most languages well enough. Extrapolation. Intuitive language comprehension. That would be the result of recognition and training of force sensitivity. Your kind have little use of translation droids. Of course, your kind also encounters danger on a far more frequent basis than the average citizen. You would do well to have me work for you then, before someone else makes use of my more exotic functions. Why would you be, there, be better than an armored battle droid? Disclosure. Finesse. Battle droids hold battlefields. I'm capable of eliminating a very specific type of target. You're beginning to sound like an assassin. Retraction. Droids built for such a function face strict regulation and often have unique difficulties with previous owners. I therefore make no claim to that designation, prospective buyer. I am a law-abiding droid. Yes, indeed. Law-abiding. That's me. <laughs> you don't sound very convincing. Request. Please do not speak so loudly, prospective buyer. Truly wish my price to be doubled. Let's go back to my previous questions there, HK. Objection. 
my functions are wasted here, prospective purchaser. I will answer your queries, but I assure you, I am better utilized elsewhere. You mentioned battle and protocol. Outline your functions. Refusal. It is not desirable for me to reveal core functions while still in the possession of Yukalaka, prospective purchaser. It is sufficient to say that I am a fully capable translator and cultural analyst, and I am also proficient in personal combat. Why are you keeping information to yourself? Explanation. I have been recently fitted with a restraining bolt, if you must know. With it in place, access to much of my memory core is restricted. Not to mention that the fool Ithorian might raise his asking price if he knew more, or make inquiries into my history. Neither outcome is beneficial to me. So access to your memory is restricted? Statement. Indeed possible that the Athorian placed the restraining bolt on me to prevent my return to a previous owner. It is also possible that the removal of the bolt will not restore memory functions. Without my memory, I do not know if I know the answer. Do not interpret this as a reduction of my worth, however. My capabilities are quite expensive. How do I know you'll be loyal once the restraining bolt is removed? Assurance. I am fully autonomous, but lack resources. I will grant loyal service in exchange for proper maintenance. As well, it is rare that I am able to utilize my full array of abilities. You seem likely to give me the opportunity to do so. And why is that? Extrapolation. You are no farmer or diplomat. You are armed and comfortable as such. We will mesh well. Doesn't Yukalaka question you about your reluctance to reveal your functions? Explanation. It is rare for a droid to resist an owner in this way. Doubtless the Athorian considers my stubbornness an embellishment to add interest to a seemingly mundane protocol droid. Well, let's go back to my previous questions then. Objection. I'm not familiar with Sistec Corporation. What else do they make? Answer. With the restraining bolt in place, I do not have access to my memory core. I suspect, however, by the fine quality of my manufacture, that they are a prestigious company indeed. I suspect I am of unique construction, or perhaps I was intended for a very specific customer. How I ended up here, I can hardly say. It is sufficient to say that I am a fully capable translator and cultural analyst, and I am also proficient in personal combat. Alright. I'll see you about purchasing you then. Statement. The fool Ithorian has decided I am to be an expensive purchase. He does this out of greed, and not out of knowledge of my true capabilities. Advisement. I have observed him. He is a coward, and will be responsive to aggressive bargaining. Does you and Laka know you talk about him like this? Statement. I wish only to be purchased, and away from ill-treatment at the hands of this poorly skilled mechanic. I have no desire to be subtle. Qualification. Oh, of course I shall be quite pleasant to you, should you purchase me, please. <laughs> oh, alright, since you ask so nicely. Welcome back. Yes, I knew you would return. I still have that droid available. This HK-47 is a good deal. Let me ask a few questions about him first. Let me just say that every function I tested has performed perfectly. Those that I could find, anyway. You don't seem to know much about it. The unit's been a little uncooperative. They get that way when they go too long without a memory wipe. And if the unit proves even more uncooperative once we purchase it... You can leave it alone if you find its manners is amusing. It might be a little eccentric, but it's stable. Uh, why haven't you wiped its memory? I would have, but I can't seem to access any inner circuits. It's definitely built for security and built to last. At any rate, it claims that it doesn't have access to its own memory core anyway. Could be telling the truth, it's hard to say. What functions have you tested? I haven't examined its programming, but I've made some observations. It has obvious protocol and translation skills, including sand people dialects, apparently. Surprisingly, it also handles weapons extremely well. I'd even say it's seen combat, but it won't tell. Stubborn thing. It needs to sell itself better. 
two moisture farmers have been in, but it just stood there. What does the HK-47 designation mean? I haven't got a clue. It doesn't match any protocol or utility standard. I assume it's a retired model. I tell you to ask the thing yourself, but it's pretty stubborn. Quality construction, though. Uh, where did you get this HK-47 unit? I acquired the droid from a friend that manages an off-world Zerka warehouse. It was in trade for a debt he owed. He said no one will miss it. Might have been surplus. It doesn't look like it was Zerka made, though. Hold on a second, I think Mission had something to say there. Let me... Gee, that doesn't sound suspicious at all. Warehouse workers have a bad habit of paying off their debts with other people's property, you know? Hmm. Well, I'm interested. Let's talk price. It's a very solid machine in good shape. I can't let it go for less than 5,000 credits. 5,000? Can I convince you to go with the price of it? 4,000, not a credit less. That was quick. Desperate to sell. Uh, no, not really, but the first thing really was a little high. You never know, the occasional person bites right away. Perhaps I could convince you to go lower? Lower? How low are you expecting me to go? These are difficult times. The Ninja Droid cover was a large one. Hmm. I could threaten to break his neck. <laughs> but no, I'm not gonna do that. Come on now, think of the advertising you'll get from me. I believe you actually would tell people about my business. Alright, but this is the last offer. 2,500 credits. 2,500 credits then, I'll pay it. You will? I mean, of course you will. Let me just withdraw those credits. Hey, you weren't lying. Oh, thank you very much. Just go on over and talk to it. I'll deactivate the restraining bolt when you take possession. It's a good purchase, especially if it actually speaks to Sampoopy Don, like I said. Of course, I don't think it was telling me everything. Not many droids are programmed to lie, though. Thanks. Goodbye. Oh, thank you. Most definitely. Statement. I see you have purchased me, Master. I find this a satisfactory arrangement. My restraining bolt will be deactivated when you take possession of me. Am I to accompany you now? Shall I kill something for you? Kill something for me? Answer. Indeed. I am most eager to engage in some unadulterated violence. At your command, of course, Master. Uh-huh. Travel with me now. Statement. I will enter into your service now, Master. I am certain you will make adequate use of my primary functions. My gears are practically quivering with anticipation. HK-47 has joined our party. Let me, let me, let me correct that statement. The best droid character in the history of Star Wars has joined our party. <laughs> yes, this is HK-47. He is a level 6 combat droid. Um, I'll replace uh, mission with HK real quick. Let me level him up real quick. Let's see. If you're if you are a combat droid, maybe I should give you a sniper shot. <laughs> Okay, so what else do you got here? Okay, so you got your own blaster rifle. Mm, maybe I'll give you a disruptor rifle instead. Let me give you some shield as well. And some armor. Okay, you're good to go. What? Welcome aboard, HK. Let me talk to Yukalaka one more time. Hello again. It's unfortunate, but I have nothing new in droids to show you right now. Things are very slow. But since you purchased that worn out HK 47, you'll get excellent prices as soon as I'm restocked. Objection. 
worn out? Listen, you talentless organic meatbag. One word from my master and I will pull you apart, limb from useless limb. Uh, you got a little hostile there, droid, haven't you? I have always been hostile. Now that I need no longer rely on you and your primitive maintenance skills, I do not need to hide it. Yes, well, uh, just keep away from me then. I'm just an honest businessman. Uh-huh. I'll see you around then, Yuka Laka. That's quite alright. You may be happy with the purchase you've already made. Query, can I kill him now, Master? I would like ever so much to crush his neck. Just a little. It is a long fantasy of mine. Maybe later. You hear that, meatbag? I will be back. Uh, uh. <laughs> Welcome aboard, HK. Oh, how I've missed you. <laughs> Alright, so I think I'm going to end the episode here. Thanks so much for watching, guys. If you like this video, consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash burningearthvfx. Help support the channel, help support future videos like this one, and we will see you guys next time. Take care, everybody. May the Force be with you. I'm Burning Earth Chris, and we'll see you guys next time. If you like this video, consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash burningearthvfx. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and be sure to follow us on Facebook for more exciting updates. And as always, thanks for watching.